Hi, I'm Clever Ghoul, but you can call me Nikki. Welcome back to the channel. It's that time of year again when Halloween decor is out in stores and Halloween conventions are popping up around the country. That's right, it's the end of July. Now a lot of my spooky people out there know that we've all been hearing the call. Code Orange, Code Orange. And if you're not sure what Code Orange means, it means that Halloween decor is back up in stores and it is time to go Halloween hunting. You might be like me and you don't really wanna spend the money, especially because you know you're capable of making some pretty cool decorations on your own. Am I right? I have the perfect craft for you. Cheese cloth ghosts. Now, these are really easy. You can find tutorials all across the internet for them, and I've never looked at a single one. So, you're gonna come along with me as I try to do this today. This should be interesting. All you'll need is some cheesecloth, some balloons, trash like used bottles and cans that you're gonna get rid of anyway, some tape, a sponge brush, and some glue like either Elmer's or Mod Podge. Now, last year I made some of these on my own with Mod Podge, and I live in a humid area, and over time they just the ghosts started to really become depressed. Like, literally. They wilted big time. So this time I decided to use Magic Modge. Now, if you're not familiar with Magic Modge, I did a whole video on it a few weeks ago talking about if I thought it compared to Mod Podge. And while ultimately I think Mod Podge itself is still a better option, I figured why not give it another shot with this project? Especially since it cures in 48 hours and I wanna see how it holds up in a humid environment. Also, additionally, you may want some wire to make like little ghosty arms on the side. And we may need some black felt later if you're going to do facial expressions. And what what else? What else? Oh, a drop cloth. This is a little bit messier, so if you have a place outside to do it, or a drop cloth, or some sort of situation you can set up to do this, that would be preferable because there's water and glue involved and it drips and just, just trust me on this and have a drop cloth. So let's get into it. To start, I blew up a balloon and tied the knot off and then pushed that knot through the straw hole of a lid of an old to-go cup. And then I put that lid back on the cup. So we basically have this base here with a balloon and a cup. The balloon acts as the head or the dome part of the ghost. Then I added some tape to stabilize the head and have it sit exactly the way I wanted it to. And before I got started, I realized I wanted this one to have little arms that stuck up. So I cut a piece of 18 gauge wire, bent the wire ends over to make like little loop hands twisted it on either side, then took some blue tape and wrapped that off so there were no sharp edges, and then kind of just wiggled that wire around and taped it to the cup in exactly the place where I wanted the little arms to stick up. Next, I mixed up some of the glue and the water together. Now, I highly recommend if you're doing this that you do have a disposable container to put this in. Remember, we don't want to put glue down the drain later on, so it's better to have something you can either chuck it into a trash bag or something that you use that you don't mind getting a little messy or if glue stuck to it forever, you wouldn't be upset. I'm using this piece of trash because because I'm a trash goblin. So anyway, mix that water and glue together. Then you're gonna take your cheesecloth and cut it out. If you wanna do one super seamless ghost, you want to be careful when you're cutting out your fabric to measure it along the base that you've just made so that everything sits just right. For me, I kind of like when they have multiple layers and look like they've been through some sort of trauma or you know, the haunting's been really rough on them over the last several eons. So I like that like shredded drapey look, you know? So for me, I use multiple pieces that I layer on top of a bigger piece and just layers, 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 layers. Once you cut your cheesecloth, you're gonna take it, dunk it in that water and glue you just made, get it real saturated, and then lightly wring it out. You don't want it to be soaking, but you don't want it to be bone dry either. You just wanna get it in that nice little in-between area. Once you lightly wring out that cheesecloth, you're gonna drape it over the balloon. And then I go around and look because usually at the edges of the cheesecloth, the woven parts of that cloth want to stick together and they make kind of a ridge. So I go around with my fingers and I smooth it out everywhere to just kind of create this seamless ridge free look. Again, I am layering my ghost to make it look creepier, but I still want to get rid of those little ridges around the edge. You're going to repeat this process again with more cheesecloth. Two, three layers of cheesecloth is good. I'm sure you could do it with one. And again, I've never looked up a tutorial. This is just how I do it because I want it to be a little bit sturdier. So once you get the cheesecloth layer or layers to your liking. I usually go in with just the glue and a sponge brush. Take that sponge brush and just dab along the top of that balloon and the sides of the balloon or the head of the ghost just to add some extra structural integrity to the top of that ghost so that if I hang it or if it's standing, it holds its shape. I don't want there to be a collapse because remember, we're gonna pop that balloon in the end. So we wanna make sure it really holds that structure. I did this process again two more times, making can and balloon bottle structure so that they were different heights and different sizes. And these I didn't add arms to it. The same process as before, cutting out the cheesecloth, dunking it in the water, glue, squeezing it out lightly, draping it, smoothing the edges, repeat 
heat, then sponging that last layer of strictly glue on the top of the ghost. Then after a day or two, I would say you could do this within 24 hours, but 48 is probably better. You're gonna pop that balloon and you have your own ghost. Very exciting. Now, if you like the minimalist ghost look, you can skip this next step. I personally debated back and forth what I was going to do, which I guess you'll just have to see in the reveal. But if you want your ghost to have more personality, it's time to make it a little face. Now, I think a good way to do this is cut out some felt shapes. You're gonna basically draw on them or just go straight into cutting, make some little eyes and a mouth, whatever expression you want. It can be kind of startled like the ghost behind me, happy, or it could, again, be nothing. This is where you just decide how you want your ghost to look. From there, once you cut those out, you're gonna take some tacky glue and just put it on the back of that and stick it onto your ghost carefully. I think you could also use hot glue in this step, but you really need to be careful because burning your fingers is a big risk with this. Chances are high that you are gonna burn yourself. Now, finally, you get to decide here. Do you wanna add fishing line to the top of your ghost by like sticking it in, tying a knot and hanging it somewhere? Or do you want them to be tabletop decor? It's really up to you, which I guess means now it's time for the reveal. Boom. Hello. Sorry, I had to do it. Here are the finished ghosties. As you can see, I added fishing lines so they could really hang around and haunt properly. I decided to add a felt face for the big ghost, but left the other two faceless for now. I did run into a few issues. The arms didn't have as much shape as I hoped for, so I think next time I would use some chunky wadded up foil in order to make the arms stand out more. Also, the magic mod really adhered to the balloons and messed up the shape of the smaller ghost, and it transferred some of the balloon dye onto the cheesecloth. To fix that, you could just paint the ghost white, but I wanted to include that in the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me over on TikTok and Instagram at cleverghoul.yt, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.